Petra in the Rye, check. Uncle Tom's Cabin, check. Ulysses, check. Canterbury Tales, check. A list of books I didn't read in high school, check. A list of books I tried to check out of a library and got me thrown out instead because they were banned, also check. Thrown out of a library? Whatever happened to shh? Believe it or not, in 2013, books are being challenged and banned across the United States, home of the First Amendment. That's the one about Congress making no laws prohibiting freedom of speech or of the press. It turns out that just because you write and publish a book, it doesn't mean it can't be challenged or protested to prevent libraries from carrying it or bookstores from selling it. Books are banned for all kinds of reasons. Language, sex, violence, subversive ideas, offending religions. You know, the stuff you see on TV 24-7. That's the kind of content that gets books banned in repressive countries without the freedom of the press we have. Countries like Iran, Russia, Egypt, and Cuba. These countries don't just ban a book, they even burn them, a tactic used by Taliban in Afghanistan, or by the Nazis in World War II Germany, or by religious groups throughout history in Europe. Of course, that kind of thing doesn't happen here anymore. Unless you're a church in Florida. Every year in September, the America Library Association sponsors Banned Books Week and lists the books that have been most frequently challenged in the U.S. in the past year. What kinds of books are banned? Bad books. Dangerous books. We're not talking Harry Potter here. Or we are. That's right. The Harry Potter books have made the banned book list frequently. In 2012, that list included Antango Makes Three, a true story about two male penguins at New York's Central Park Zoo who raised a baby penguin together. Aw, who doesn't like penguins? People in Shiloh, Illinois, Charlotte, North Carolina, Sterling, Virginia, and numerous other cities, that's who. Books that show up frequently on the list are the Captain Underpants series about a superhero who fights the forces of evil in his underpants. What superhero who's any kind of superhero doesn't fight evil in his underpants? Sorry, Iron Man. Okay, if cute gay penguin parents and hilariously not gay underpants wearing cartoon characters are banned, I'll bet that list has some really dangerous books on it too. Books on how to do dangerous and illegal things like counterfeiting money, breaking into houses, electronic terrorism, how to kill someone with your bare hands. Whoa, I have never seen a finger used for that before. Nope, not on the list. That's because they're on the internet. Who needs dead tree books anymore when we've got the web? In 2004, Google began a project called Google Print Library Project to scan and digitize the entire collections of books at a number of large U.S. libraries. What started nine years ago with a few college libraries and the New York Public Library has grown to dozens of libraries and over 30 million books online. The ongoing project has been called the largest collection of human knowledge ever assembled. And that includes the guy who won all that money on Jeopardy. What was his name? Ken Jennings. That's right. Thanks, Google. At some point in the not-too-distant future, all books, banned, burned, or just plain bad, will be available somewhere on the internet, or in digital form on a flash drive small enough to sneak past governments, censors, and nosy librarians. So should all books be available to everyone, or should some be banned, and who should decide? What it comes down to is fear of knowledge, and knowledge is power, which is a famous quote by the infamous philosopher, scientist, and author Sir Francis Bacon, whose books were banned during the Spanish Inquisition. Go ahead, look it up. I'm Kagan, and shh.